Homer Simpson and Ned Flanders are one of the most prolific character duos in the history of The Simpsons. They might actually be number one on that duos list, outside of the internal Simpson family combinations. It's either them, Homer Moe, Homer Burns, or Bart Milhouse. But what I think separates Homer and Flanders from the pack is just how unstable and chaotic their relationship is. Sure, they have their typical status quo, but this is a duo that the writers love playing around with. What happens when these two hate each other? What happens when they become friends? How do these total opposites connect? Fundamentally, what really makes a good Homer and Flanders adventure? Today, let's take a walk down memory lane and look at the highs and lows. Find out what kind of relationship Homer and Flanders truly have. Ah, the status quo. Everybody loves Ned Flanders, except Homer. It's pretty much the first trait given to the secondary character. Early on, this was primarily fueled by Homer's sense of envy, that the grass is always greener and the Flanderses always have it a little better. Just look at that RV. Just look at that man cave. Over the years, we've seen Homer butthurt over plenty of Flanders successes. He's mad that Flanders uses his monkey's paw wishes well, gets a senior discount, that he wins $50,000, a new computer, or more recently, discovers a huge bag of money, which was always one of Homer's dreams. There's just something about Ned's personality that brings about a sort of inferiority complex within Homer, and a sense of competitiveness. Now he's picking a fight over miniature golf, or stealing his job as town crier, or yard sale microphone guy. Around season two, the writers expanded this dynamic to a more generalized dislike of Flanders' goody two-shoes personality. Like, take Boy Scouts in the Hood as an example. We get a bit of Homer's inferiority complex, but mostly it's Homer thinking Flanders is a square and doesn't want to be stuck with him. They have ideological differences over cursing, baptizing children, and whether it's okay to have premarital sex. I mean, Flanders spent an entire weekend cock-blocking Homer, that's gonna instill some resentment. Homer's done a lot of mean stuff to Flanders over the years. His dislike of his neighborino has manifested itself in unique ways. Usually it's all stupid Flanders, shut up Flanders, general rudeness to his face. It got so bad that he wrote a song about how everybody hates Ned Flanders. Other times he lashes out by dragging Flanders' name through the mud, through general schadenfreude, or permanently borrowing his stuff. I mean, what's a better way to get over your envy of others' possessions than to steal them? Or if that's not good enough, why not just wish they were dead? Remember, this is a guy who is going to club his neighbor with a pipe. He kicked Flanders out of his own bomb shelter. In a serious Flanders, Homer goes for the money over rescuing him from a fire. The last one was more of a moment of weakness, but still, Homer's not that concerned about Ned's welfare. And even all of these are ignoring the multiple trials of horrors where Homer straight up murders him. It's hard to nail down what's the worst thing Homer has intentionally done to Flanders. There's a lot of competition. Bart's Comet, perhaps? I mean, he essentially tried to send him to his death. That's pretty bad. Even still, since Homer tends to be the protagonist, these unpleasant moments provide opportunities for character growth. Flanders becomes a useful tool in any plot told from Homer's point of view. But it does make me wonder, how does Ned feel about all these situations? No offense to Homer, but this is the scenario I really enjoy. The reason why Ned Flanders is such a great character foil is that he's so unflappable. This extreme version of turn-the-other-cheek Christianity, in which Homer's abuse either goes unnoticed or is met with a friendly smile and corny catchphrase. In the status quo of the show, this is more of a one-sided feud, and Ned's issues fall in the more passive-aggressive range. Now, Ned Flanders probably wouldn't admit to outright disliking Homer. However, he most certainly looks down his nose at his lifestyle. We already talked about the baptizing, cursing, and premarital sex. Furthermore, Flanders has taken it upon himself to try to save Homer's soul on a couple of occasions, like in Homer the Heretic and The Greatest Story Ever Doed. Although he tried to damn Homer in a Halloween special, so I guess it evens out. Then we have an episode like Todd Todd, Why Has Thou Forsaken Me, 
where he casts Todd out to live in godlessness with the Simpson family. Once again, Ned would argue that he's hating the sin and not the sinner in all these examples, whereas others might find him condescending and judgmental. In To Surveil With Love, he takes a job monitoring the town, calling out Homer when he's not living up to his standards. Look, I love Ned Flanders and all, but yeah, this guy's got a holier-than-thou attitude, and it's hard to say he truly likes Homer when he judges him so. That being said, Homer makes himself a pretty easy person to judge, has a jerk-ass personality that would test even the most patient. So what is the tipping point with these two? Is it just arbitrary? That sometimes he turns the other cheek and sometimes pushes back? With Flanders, it often takes multiple barrages of abuse to cut through that wall of patience. In Dead Putting Society, he curtly asks Homer to leave after the first run-in, then fights back the second time. Hurricane Nettie, the patron saint of Angry Ned episodes, he only explodes after a long sequence of misfortunes and Springfield incompetence. In a later episode, Flanders ends up evicting the Simpsons after they repeatedly disrespect him. In Black Eyed Please, Flanders literally punches Homer in the face because he's being so darn obnoxious, and then later punches him a second time for similar reasons. In most instances, it takes some kind of provocation or bullying from Homer to get this kind of reaction. Ned's just playing defense. But we've seen Homer's general personality get on Flanders' nerves too. The second half of Homer Loves Flanders is all about how very, very annoying Homer is. There can be a jealousy factor in play. When Homer becomes the nicest guy in town, Flanders tries to outdo him. When Flanders gets a new dog, he becomes quite resentful that she likes Homer more than him. Personally, I've always enjoyed these small, petty moments from Ned. That he doesn't have to be provoked, he can just have his own hang-ups and insecurities too. It's fun seeing the darker side of his personality. I think that's why he makes such a great villain in Treehouse of Horror segments. Like, they have a Dexter parody in which Homer tricks Flanders into murdering a bunch of people. It's pretty fun. It features Flanders at his angriest. Now, I don't want them to turn him into aggro Flanders or anything like that, but I love witnessing his conflicted feelings toward his neighbor. We shouldn't only get Homer's point of view. These episodes demonstrate that the Flanders side is equally as interesting. Okay, so we've reached the midpoint of this breakdown, and there are a bunch of examples that don't definitively fall into a love-hate category. Being neighbors for 30 plus years, Homer and Flanders have an extremely messy relationship, especially when their families get involved. I think you know where this is going. It's well documented how messed up Homer and Maude's situation is. I have an entire video detailing this. Boy, Homer and Flanders sure have a great relationship when Homer is drunkenly ogling his wife's breasts, trying to seduce her, and accusing her of being a witch. And, you know, inadvertently causing her death. Yeah, that's going to make any relationship awkward. To Homer's credit, he does try supporting Flanders afterwards in his bumbling way. Ned actively seeks Homer out for comfort. And, for what it's worth, in a later episode, Flanders does say he forgave Homer for Maude. On the other hand, we gotta talk about that hot Flanders and Marge action. Homer may have been interested in Maude, but they never got as far as these two. Just look at this strawberry scene. In season 15, Marge writes a novel in which her self-insert character actually has an affair with the Flanders stand-in. Notably, this is the only instance where Homer could suspect any potential infidelity and actually corners Ned at a cliffside. Don't worry though, Homer just wanted advice on how to be a better husband. Aww. No wonder Marge married Flanders after Homer's death. Although honestly, I'm not surprised at all that so many women fell for this guy. Even Homer can't resist him. Ned Flanders has also served as a pawn in Homer-Bart conflicts. Take the Simpsons movie as an example. Homer's jerk-ass behavior drives Bart toward Flanders' softer and gentler parenting style. There's a similar episode in which Flanders mentors Bart and Homer mentors Nelson to get back at him. Or to flip the dynamic, there's an episode in which Homer pretends to be Flanders' best friend to try to get under Bart's skin. Flanders is a relatively neutral party, merely a device for creating jealousy traps. Speaking of traps, 
Homer and Flanders have found themselves in plenty of perilous situations over the years. They have this bad habit of putting each other in danger and having to rely on each other to survive. We've seen them in a house fire, stranded on a boat, beaten up in Las Vegas, hallucinating on engine fumes, being shot at by snake, attacked while sneaking supplies, threatened by a defective trampoline, and stalked by hitmen. Many of these examples are at the climax of the story, this nice moment for Homer and Flanders coming together to save the day. At the same time, it's often Homer's fault why they're even in that situation, and I'm not sure how happy Flanders is about being there. Even still, these two have clearly been through a lot together and would obviously have developed a bond. As bad as Homer is, even he would learn to respect someone who has just saved his life. Maybe. Thankfully, the writers are able to give these two some relatively pleasant moments. That they're not always hurling insults at each other, they can have a real working relationship. Not necessarily close friends, but they don't hate each other's guts. They're friendly enough to discuss this terrible, deceitful cable guy. Homer can ask him a parenting question to pass the questionnaire, work together to find or save the kids. Some of these examples are Homer working with Flanders out of necessity, or perhaps Marge is forcing the issue. After all, Homer clearly didn't want to invite Ned to his Mardi Gras party or help him find a new job, but is totally willing to when asked. The less said about Homer getting rid of mod stuff, the better. But it is kind of nice that Homer, as much as he dislikes Flanders, will make himself available to help out, give him some dating advice, travel to Canada to get Rod's insulin, produce a Bible-themed halftime show. In that example with Flanders' new dog, Homer kindly explains why Ned is the perfect owner for her. We have some examples where Flanders proactively reaches out and Homer is actually receptive to his advice. However, these are the exception rather than the rule. Usually, Homer has to hate Flanders before learning how to be a supportive neighbor. When Flanders failed is obviously the poster boy for this how ridiculously awful Homer is, and how Homer comforts him at his lowest moment. Then we have examples like the bullying episode, where Flanders demands an apology, and Homer begs outside his house for several days until he's forgiven. Or in a series Flanders, where he helps him hide from the hitmen, secretly bringing him supplies. Season 16's Home Away From Homer is an example of both characters learning to appreciate each other. Homer humiliates Flanders and causes him to move away. But when separated, Homer realizes how good he had it, and Flanders finds a place too squeaky clean even for him. The Simpsons love themselves a Homer atonement story, and Flanders is the perfect outlet for a grand gesture. It's kind of pathetic that simply tolerating Flanders is an achievement for Homer sometimes, but we'll take what we can get. At the very least, it's a good start. Ah, here come the warm fuzzies. There is nothing more heartwarming than Homer and Flanders forming an unlikely friendship. Okay, maybe there are. But come on, they're still pretty darn wholesome together. Most of the time, when these two become chummy, Flanders has to make the first move. You know, show that he has similar interests or want to have some fun. Homer loves Flanders happens because Ned invites him to the game and treats him to a great time. They want to do stuff together, like go to the lake. Maybe they'll take a trip to Vegas or go to the Super Bowl. The Vegas example is especially notable since Ned actively seeks Homer out to teach him to let loose. Actual self-reflection from Ned. Homer may have jealousy issues with Flanders, but if he stops being such a stick in the mud and meets Homer at his level, Homer is willing to give him a chance. In that Todd Flanders episode, Ned gets super depressed and drinks away his sorrows at Moe's. Homer and Flanders end up having a great time together. He actually does lift Flanders' spirits a little. That is, until they both get hit by a car. That's kind of a downer. Sometimes, Homer and Flanders' friendship is the result of working closely together. In season 20, they team up to become bounty hunters and have a great time bringing people to justice. They make a perfect team. Later, after a falling out and an exciting chase scene, Homer actually confesses that he loved Flanders. In season 27's Flan Canyon, their families go on vacation, rather reluctantly from Homer's perspective. Homer and Flanders go on an adventure to get some supplies, 
And, after successfully securing them, they party on the boat together. Look at them, they're singing and dancing and playing air guitar. It's a legitimately nice moment for them. At the end of the episode, they actually rekindle their friendship with a trip to the postcard museum. In season 31's Christmas flashback, Flanders lets him stay at his house, and Homer helps Maude deliver her baby. Ned is so thankful Homer was there for her that they named their son Todd Homer Flanders. However, one of my favorite Homer Flanders moments happens in a different Christmas episode, I Won't Be Home for Christmas. In this one, Homer finds him closing for the night, realizes what a difficult year Ned has had, and offers to buy something from him. To be honest, re-watching this for the Christmas video is what inspired this whole project. I think it's a notable moment in that it's not fueled by a Homer Atonement story or even a Flanders-oriented episode at all. It's one of the very rare times where Homer actively reaches out without any specific motivation. It's just Homer trying to be kind. Imagine that. This moment inspired the video, but also the question of who really is Homer's best friend? I mean in a platonic way, Marge. Y'all are more like soulmates anyway. Flanders has definitely referred to Homer as his best friend multiple times in the past. In that episode where he moves away, it's the reason he feels so utterly betrayed by Homer. I think there's an argument that Flanders is secretly Homer's best friend in the sense that he's someone supportive that Homer can always rely upon, compared to someone like Mo. However, as heartwarming these two can be, the natural status quo of the show is that Homer doesn't enjoy Flanders' company that much. Let's not forget the first two parts of this video. Homer is just too consistently rude to conclude that, as a whole, they have a mutual friendship. I don't think Homer and Flanders are friends in a traditional sense. I think of them more as brothers. It's ironic that Homer laughed at Flanders' letter that called him his brother because it's not a terrible descriptor for their relationship. You know what I mean? Brothers fight, they don't often get along, can get super competitive with each other. Flanders is like a judgy older brother, Homer his insecure younger sibling. The Simpsons and Flanders families are surprisingly close. They vacation together, they trust each other to babysit their kids or stay with them when needed. Homer is comfortable enough to ask Flanders to babysit while he's taking a bath. We see Rod and Todd calling him Uncle Homer somewhat regularly. Even little Bart described his neighbor as Uncle Ned. Homer and Flanders have been through so much together, have developed a closeness that goes beyond mere neighbors. I think that episode title was right, that deep down, Homer does love Flanders, even if he doesn't necessarily like him most of the time. Say what you want about having 30 or 40 seasons, but it's kind of cool that such a simple relationship archetype has evolved in the way that it has. That at this point, the show can do pretty much anything with them. Homer and Flanders are chaotic, dysfunctional, and occasionally wholesome, and I wouldn't have it any other way.